Hello and welcome to Bay One. This is Trafal Maraxi. Uh, we're just about to start doing a tutorial on a tier two hovercraft. For this, I'm using the Bay One account. Um, it just helps a little bit in that it's more limited than my normal player account. So let's just get logged in here and get everything set and ready to go. So um, I've already started a little bit on the hovercraft design just so that I could get a feel for what I'm, I was doing. It's going to be based on the hover donuts, um, although obviously trying to adapt it for tier 2 is going to be an interesting experience. And I'm also limited on the amount of RP I've got on this account. I just had to spend an hour or so earning a little bit more RP. Uh, this isn't the design, so let's just go and switch to the correct bay, uh, which would be bay 4 I think, no bay 3. And this is what I've got so far, um, but obviously I'm going to tear this down and more or less start over so that you can see how this side is built up. And we're also going to use the appropriate tier of armor, so let's just delete all this stuff. So it's all going to be built out using um, brown armor if possible, uh, which I need to go ahead and purchase. I don't know how many blocks I'm actually going to need. Uh, but let's just go and make sure we got that in advance. So probably another hundred of those. Another hundred of those and that'll do to start us off with. So, um, yeah, basically this is the chassis under which the uh, actual pilot seat uh, sits. So you can see where I've got one of these blocks facing backwards, a prism facing forwards. On the front of that one I've got another prism facing forwards. On the back here I've got a prism facing backwards and this is the actual connection to the rest of the bot. Same here. Um, and that takes care of most of the important stuff I think. Um, although I'm not sure why this... Uh, whatever, we'll work it out as we go along. So what I need to do is finish building off the triforcing. Uh, as you'll be able to see, this um, is connected through the front and back, but not anywhere else. So um, yeah, let's go and use white blocks to frame this out. So make it easier to actually get pieces in place. And then three of those blocks. And we are going to have this block connected forward a little bit just to maintain connections eventually. Um, and now what we need to do is uh, just put on this block here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything above. Yeah, that's going to be turned into a prism because we don't actually need a, a, a tetra because we don't actually need a prism there. Uh, so let's add on the mount for that. Uh, hover blade. It's not supposed to be an SMG on there. One on the front here and then we want to build out these bars here which are what connect to the outer ring of the craft. So, oops. Let's pull those blocks out. I did that all wrong. My bad. I need to start one back on these ones. And then these ones are actually connected like so, I think. Let's just check. Yeah. And then pull these blocks away. And then this is where we start on the outer ring of armor, which all of this is going to get replaced uh, with brown, just to show that you can build this with tier 1 blocks more or less. We need to get rid of those two there. Um, yeah, so also need to grab one of these. Just make sure we're right there. And we had some of these inverted. And all of these, uh, with the reason we're using um, Tetras is due to weight. So let's get that one on there, and and then we have a 
prism that goes on the back. So a lot of the complexity here is just in needing to frame the actual attachment points out. And then we'll do the same thing with these blocks here. And we don't want the top and bottom layers of armor here touching. Uh, the reason for that is um, spacing and triforcing the armor. So damage that goes to here will not transmit up and down. So you still end up with some protection even if this entire wall of armor is taken out. Um, let's pull that hover blade off so we can actually put... I didn't need to do that, but... Uh, so that we can put that block in there. Let's put that hover blade back in. In total, this design is going to require eight hover blades at tier two. And it's also going to have some thrusters for additional speed on there. Um, now I'm going to take these guns off because they're superfluous at the moment. So uh, let's get these in place. And the reason I've already got part of the frame here is because I was experimenting with trying to see where I wanted to go with this design and find out what would actually be effective. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier instead of switching out to a different bay and referring to what you're doing. Now, I did consider having like one half built and the other half not built, but yeah, I decided against that. Alright, so that block, we've got these blocks. Um, not needing to worry about outside mount points on these at the moment. We'll see how we are with the amount of armor that's here. Or how we are on RP actually before we try building another layer of armor. Because the entire idea of this is that it's about having concentric rings. Concentric rings, yes. Um, so if the outside ring goes, you've still got an inner layer of armor, etc, uh, etc. Et so let's just continue with building this stuff out. Um, hopefully the sound levels on this stream are actually okay. I haven't really been able to check them. So, okay. And then that's a mount point there. Nope. So it's going to be exactly the same function in the front here as well when we're building out to surround the front hover. So let's just get these hover blades in place. And the reason that we've got this weird arrangement is so that damage to this hover doesn't transmit directly down into the bed here. Instead, it just goes backwards one, then transmits, and then has to tra either travel through this block, this block, and this block before it can actually go anywhere. Uh, because you're expecting more damage to come from the front than you are from behind or from the side unless you get flanked. Uh, but anyway, so let's continue with this part. And I prefer to work in the lighter blocks where possible, um, purely because um, if you build with weight management in mind to start with, then you're going to end up wasting less in terms of RP in buying stuff you don't actually need. So uh, you could easily build this design using prisms or something like that, but um, yeah, there's no point wasting that. It, especially if you're limited at uh, low tiers anyway. Um, for me it doesn't really matter, I've got more than enough RP. If I wanted to I could do this on my main account. Um, but yeah, it's, I just want to make sure that I'm keeping to the same limitations everyone else has to face. Uh, let's pull... no, I don't need to pull that one out, I can just put that there. And another prism on the front. And this is what takes most of the time in uh, complex builds is um, doing that kind of stuff just to get the block placement. Ok, 
Okay, I did that wrong, so that's actually supposed to be a prism in there, okay. Take those two out and then it's back to the tetras here. And we can always change these to the different uh, blocks later if we need to use uh, connection points or anything like that. So let's just put the last hover blade on the back there. Um, what I don't like is the this section here isn't really connected to the front. Um, you're literally, it's very weak relying on this one block to connect to the entire vehicle. So we're definitely going to need some additional shielding underneath here. And for that, we're going to actually build like a little bridge underneath here to absorb that damage. Uh, so I'm not worried about Triforce in this section so much. Uh, but we will look at that to a degree. So, and I'm also going to try and go for a flat look underneath this if possible. So let's actually just build a platform down here. And this is how we're going to manage getting the blocks in underneath. And of course the idea is to, it's concentric layers of armor. So we got that, if you look there, you got that set of prisms there. And that won't connect to the front ones, they're just connecting from the side, so any damage to the front is not going to transmit directly backwards, it's going to transmit up through the rest of the frame first. Uh, if we wanted to get really tricky, we could always m move this layer out further and route the damage in an even bigger arc. I'm not too worried about that at the moment because I also need to be able to put the gun turrets on here as well. Uh, so let's finish off with this and from the back it's going to obviously look a little bit different. Um, and now we're still not it's it's a little bit more rigidly connected but we're still we've still got that one connection point at the back that goes to everything on the bot um hmm, what can i do about that i'm probably going to regret doing that because uh, it is it's a direct connection which we don't really need um but i have to see if there's some other way to add an additional layer of armor to the front certainly to keep this tier two uh, so that's the main uh, tray and chassis for the bot uh, now let's see if we can actually build out in terms of building the uh, weapon turrets and stuff like that um, so we're going to be using SMGs on this uh, I probably need to focus about getting those on here now um, although, where are we going to have layers of armor on this? Uh, we're probably going to... Okay, let's put a block around here. So damage that goes to these won't transfer directly through. They'll instead go up and maybe go out to the outside frame first. Um, and then what else do we want to do? Yeah, we're going to have a ring of armor that essentially comes around the inside here as well. Something similar to that should work. Okay, that's kind of looking okay. Uh, let's make sure we can get these blocks on. Like so. And I guess we'll do the same thing on the front as well. And you can consider these to be, I guess, uh, semi-advanced building techniques at least. Um, most designs really don't need to be this complex, but if you want to spend the time, uh, it can be worth it. 
especially with dealing with lower tier damage management and all of that kind of stuff, it can make a huge difference. At higher tiers, actually, it becomes less effective in some ways, um, because you're dealing with much greater quantities of burst damage and stuff like that, but um, certainly starting out, there's no harm in doing this kind of stuff. Um, and we're going to actually have another layer of ablative armor going in here. This one's going to be visible just because it doesn't really matter if uh, we we'll leave it like this. Um, and we can do another set connected to the front here. So that connected to the back. Uh, actually we need to take these out first before we do that. There we go. Um, so yeah, bearing that in mind, our strongest points are actually our front and our rear on this design so far. Um, now I really do need to focus on making sure we get the turrets built for weapons to go on. Uh, we're currently at 334 CPU, so it's fairly light. Um, and we're going to be using tier 2 SMGs. Uh, so what do I want to do here? I'm going to want to try and have a mount point here, a mount point here. Um, how are we actually going to manage this? I'm going to see if I can actually have these mount points spur off from there, although I don't like it intersecting with that block. Um, I don't really want it connecting to the outside there either. Problems is if we have that directly connected to a weapon, the damage is just going to transmit down and take out the hover blade. Uh, let's see if we can avoid that. Um, we're probably going to want to build this up by one more block. It increases the profile a little bit more. And this is what the actual weapons are going to be mounted on. So we've got those two, and we'll means we'll probably want another two at the back then. Oh, wrong way around. And then we're going to build a like a turret type array around this to absorb damage. Um, so we need some more prisms. This is going to go there. Actually, that can face the other way. Uh, let's pull that one off for a second. Oops. There we go. Just makes for a slightly smoother look. And so what's going to happen with these is the damage that goes to these blocks is not actually going to have any way of actually transmitting itself here. Uh, instead it's going to go down into this outside frame. And then only after this goes will uh, the turret, the mount point for the gun be vulnerable. It's probably the best I can do in terms of trying to make that more um, resilient. So let's go. Uh, what do I need to do here? Right, I need to get that facing outwards. 
Um, now we're in a situation where if we were to just connect that like the other ones on the front, uh, damage would end up being transmitted down into this hover blade, which we don't want to use. So we need to make sure this one's actually inverted, like so. And then the final part is going to be like this. And exactly the same thing will happen on these blocks here. So let's start with building out these turrets now. The only down point with this is that it does mean that if we lose this outer ring, the entire uh, defense ring around here will get destroyed, so I'm not sure of a good way to deal with that at the moment. I might come up with something as I continue the build, we'll see. Oops. I can probably actually do something to connect these together so that we're not just relying on the one uh, point to anchor point for each of the defense segments. Uh, that one doesn't have the same connection issues there so we can leave that pointed down so we're good. Um, do I want to face that inwards or outwards? This I'm actually going to face outwards because it gives me another point on which I can connect blocks on the back. Uh, so we've now got four mount points for weapon turrets here and what I'm going to do, um, let's just pull the pilot seat out here for a second. Uh, have that go there and let's put that pilot seat back in. This will also work in a way to help protect the front here. Um, I'm actually going to change these into uh, prisms. I think that will still connect on. Pull that pilot seat out here again. And put him back. There we go. So uh, now we've got a little bit more connect, uh, protection for those particular blocks, which I was worried about those being vulnerable anyway. And now let's put a layer of armor across here. Um, now I didn't really think about that when building this. So I have to pull these out temporarily so I can build this. Not sure I really need this one in here, so that can go. Uh, so now these are kind of cross-connected. Uh, it just helps to provide a little bit more resilience there, and we then need to do the same on this block. And because of all of this weight that we're putting on the top here, we're going to have to do something underneath to try and uh, rebalance it. So. But overall, I'm getting a little bit more happier with this build. Um, hmm. So now, underneath here, we need to look at what else we can do. Um, or where we can actually put weapons, turrets, and mount stuff onto. Uh, so we've got these. Let's actually get these guns put on the top. So it was the tier 2 SMGs that we've got going on here. And we're still well within tier 2 at the moment, so there's no danger of running over tier yet. Um, and now we need the same kind of mount points underneath here. Uh, we can't make that into a mount point because the block's already occupied by this. Uh, but what we can do, this is kind of a critical part of the ring, but what we can do here um, we can actually invert this block. There we go. So we now do have a mount point. 
I will do that for all of these. There we go. And we'll use these as the actual turret connections. Um, but obviously we're going to want to build down one more block. So we're going to want to connect a prism onto the back side of that. And then we can actually have these uh, um, hard points anchored underneath here. So we're not so worried about needing to save mass on these, but I'm just still going to do it anyway. Uh, so. So we're symmetrical on those parts, I haven't put that block in yet. Oops. And now we want these in place. Can't do that there. We're going to have to pull these off so that we can actually do placement. Um, there we go. And of course, we need to make sure that we can actually put those back in place. Uh, how was that actually connected? Like that, okay. Then some more tetras to actually hold those on. And I know I could easily use high tier armor for this, but the idea is that I'm to use uh, what you would easily have to hand maybe after just coming out of tier 1. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to be a little bit conscientious about that because I know that I have a tendency to do some low tier designs which are actually impossible for low tier players to make otherwise. Um, so yeah, we've got all of those blocks in. Let's finish off these connection blocks. And then we should be good to put on all of the weapons that need to go here. So it's four SMGs. And now if we actually look down inside, we've got some space uh, below these uh, hover blades to add in some thrusters and stuff like that, which will definitely help out with speed. So let's see, uh, you might, uh, do I have any thrusters unlocked? I've got tier 2 and tier 3 thrusters. I'm going to use tier 2 thrusters. Um, I'm going to add how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 530 CPU that we're up to now. And then let's put those hover blades back in place on the front. 
if we can remember where they're connected. And let's see how this actually runs. I'm missing some stuff though because I haven't put that prism on the side there. Let's fix that one back on. Let's just do the last uh, check over to make sure everything is good. Um, this is going to be where I take this out and it just blows up in one hit, but yeah, that's uh, always a risk when doing these kinds of designs. Okay, uh, so there we go. That's a pretty big tier 2 hovercraft. Um, 573 CPU. I want to put two more thrusters on here, but I'm going to use the tier 1s, which I actually have to unlock because I haven't... got them on this particular account, so let's just buy two of these. And I'm going to add these on the back here just to assist with turning. Okay, so now let's add these hover blades back in. And let's go and first practice mode just to make sure I've not done anything ridiculous and stupid with this. Got a fair amount of speed. It's a little bit rocky. That's probably because it's quite a big bot. Right, something I can tell straight away is that if you look at this, the fire arcs from the back guns are actually getting blocked. We may need to look at actually moving the front turrets into the center. Uh, that will reduce the number of actual guns we've got on this. Well, we'll see. We'll give it a play test and see how it runs. And I didn't put a radar on this, so we'll sort that out in a bit. After this game. Okay, we've got a rail gunner coming up over here. pretty well. So we've lost a fair part of our bot, but it's still easily controllable. Now let's go back and see if we can take out these last few people that are on the top here.
No, I got too cocky there. Deserve to die. But three kills. And my butt was down quite a lot and still functional, so let's just. Yeah, we probably. Well, at least we reset the cap. Um, let's go and check what the rest of the team's doing. They're just busy capping. We've won. I should get a nice hero bonus. So, how much do I earn from that game at tier 2? Obviously, it's going to probably be a times 2 bonus. No, it's not because I didn't win. So. Alright, 317? 600 and whatever. Um, Alright, so. Yeah, we need to add a radar onto the back of here. Tier 1 radar. Let's flip this block around. Usually, I actually prefer to have this stuff lower down on the bot, but it should fit there. There we go, so we've got one radar. Um, we could also probably fit a jammer onto the back or something like that. Um, we can also fit additional layers of armor on the outside. Um, but yeah, let's assume that we've just won a few games. We've now got some tier 2 armor to play with, so let's go ahead and upgrade some of this on the front. Although I'd actually want to do all of these. And now let's grab some of these green blocks. So it's relatively easy to upgrade. Uh, but this is the probably the critical layer in the it's where most of our functional parts are situated. So we've got a little bit more hardened armor on the front there. Uh, let's change uh, those blocks out as well. So we've got one there. Well, that'll do initially. Let's. Oh no, it went. I want to put uh, one on here. One on there, because those are primary anchor points for the top ring of armor. Um, and yeah, so we're going to want to make sure these are actually well secured. There we go. And to be honest, what you'd probably want to do is instead of building this with brown, you'd want to use green armor. You can actually get a, and certainly focus on the core, having that all green, and then the main outer segment have that all green as well. And that should maximize your hit points while preserving um, the tier. But this should easily be able to scale up to tier three without tier three without too many problems. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna get all of these upgraded while I can. Okay, so it's a slightly more patchwork design now, um, but let's go and play again. And then the next upgrade, of course, will be switching to uh, seeing if um, we can get some tier 3 SMGs. I also need to rename this, so it's got the Twitch uh, channel listed.
We oh god. Control issues just because of my bad piloting skills. There you go, stabilizes a bit more. Um don't really try to fight hovers underneath the mushrooms because they're a pain to control. Uh, you're better off going elsewhere. And that's how you win. most of that outer surrounding. Uh, it's... right. The rule we're going down here, don't. Uh, this is more or less a death trap unless you are outnumbered and trying to keep a portion of the enemy team down here. Uh, or unless you can just go straight up cliff faces without getting stuck. Um, if you go down there, it's going. you're going to waste a lot of time for your team. Uh, but if you can pull like three or four enemies down there with you, it takes them out of the rest of the battle and gives your team a numbers advantage on the actual field of play. Just my two cents on that respect. That's another kill. I should probably call it quits there because we're already going to win this but I'm suicidal so I'm going to go there we go there we go five that helps and the good uh, thing about this design, you just spin and distribute damage around the outside. As you can see, my weapons are still largely intact. I've lost the outer ring of armor, but it's done. It's, it's served its purpose. And five kills. Really not bad. Yep, times two bonus, the uh, 1,300 for that. And now let's see, Let, uh, on the tech tree you're earning tier two points, so you should be able to uh, unlock, I think you can unlock the tier two top mount SMGs using tier two points. I don't, yeah, that's how it works. So, by now, uh, if you're playing uh, or within a few games, um, how much tech did I actually earn from that? I don't know. So, tier 3 or tier 2, I've earned 125 or whatever. Within a few games, you should actually be able to get some of these. So, let's go and p I'm going to have to buy two more top mount SMGs actually. Uh, let's go to my inventory, uh, get these top mounts and the first ones I'm going to upgrade are the ones underneath because they're the ones that actually do the most damage. Uh, will we be able to stay within tier? No, if this is the case then you want to make sure that the rear ones are the actual higher damage SMGs. Uh, that way these actually act, kind of act as a layer of armor against them so you can lose the front ones but you still keep your major firepower on the back. Firepower rather. Uh, so I can't quite add a lot of um, tier 3 SMGs on this design yet, but it will give a power advantage in some ways. Um, also, I'm not sure I like that being out in the open there. I'm going to see if there's a way I can actually mount it here somehow. 
I don't know. Because it intersects with those hover blades, yeah, it's not really... I don't like it where it is. Ugh. Let's get out. Um, I want to have that on the back. Or even flat mounted underneath might be an idea. Yeah, let's try doing that. Going to put that there, grab that radar and flat mount it. Can I? No, because those blocks collide. Well, that sucks. I mean, I could have it like that, but that's not ideal. Um, I mean, this would potentially work. Just means when those guns get shot off, I'm going to lose the radar as well. But um, that way it helps pull down the weight to the bottom half of the bot. Um, okay, let's go with this and do another round. And I forgot to rename the bot. I'm going to quit out even though... No, I'm not going to because that's annoying for the team. Yeah, I'm going to do another round, rename the bot, and then we'll do just a little bit of gameplay so, so you can see the design in action. Just use my spot, that's not going to help. Ah, run down into that ditch there. Force them to come up after me and then take out this dude that's behind. Two down. Let's get this dude. Oh, no, he's already gone. It's gone. Hayavak Jr. Okay. Yep, welcome to the stream. Ah, we've got a railgunner. We've just taken off an entire outside ring. Alright, I'm going to go and take his ass out because he's going to be. There he is. Yeah, I can't deal him with damage anymore, but at least I crippled him. Not as good on the RP gain that game, but then of course I didn't get the times 2 bonus because I've already earned that. Um, but yeah, overall you can see this is a pretty effective design. The weaknesses are the it, it kind of is a little bit too easy to lose the entire outside ring of armor. Um, not sure what we can really do to solve that at the moment. I just need to probably take another look at exactly what we're doing here. Yeah, I can't put anything up there to connect on. Um, although... What can we do? 
I'm not quite happy with this as yet. So, okay, let's take that block off. What we're going to do is connect. Break symmetry, but we'll live with that. And we'll just have a little prism connecting onto the back. That means that there's an additional anchor point for that ring. Um, but it doesn't really connect down inside still. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit easy to lo lose those outer layers, but that's exactly what they're designed to do. There is designed to distribute all of that damage around the outside of the bot, leaving your actual combat core uh, completely intact. So anyway, um, yeah, let's uh, rename the bot first. Yes, rename. There we go. And then the robots and back onto streaming. Or not, or gaming rather. And welcome to everyone that's joined the stream. I see I've now got seven viewers. That's cool. Alright, so... And, of course, the nice thing about this is this is all brown armor, and I'm going up against green armor tier 2 bots. So it's not all brown armor. I've got some green armor on here, but the majority of it is still brown armor. And I'm going up against green and teal bots and not doing bad at kicking ass. So it really does show that it's about how you build as much as um, having the best items. Overall, this is a relatively cheap design, so let's... Yeah. Let's chase him down. Keep spinning. Uh, close to actually getting killed. I've got... No, I'm going to actually die for once. Yay! First death. I think. Well, I don't know. I wasn't really tracking it properly. But I did a lot of damage. So we've got plasmas there. So what a potential other ways to modify this design. I'm kind of stuck in seeing everything up close, that sucks. Um, no, that's good, he's got the right idea. Getting close makes it harder for him to be shot. He's also getting... Uh, they need to focus on taking out weapons. Yeah, he's gone. The... okay. Some kind of flatbed. I uh, can't zoom out enough to see. Alright, well I guess we're stuck in waiting for the cap. No point backing out. Boom. Thanks to some railgunner that's sitting around here somewhere. doing it over there. Interesting. Yep, and of course he uses his shot and resets. They should really just chase him down. I 
and there we go, game over. Let's see how much I won on that as a hero. 299, so I get another 299 hero bonus, so 600 from that game. Um, so yeah, let's see about other weapons on this then. Uh, I have SMGs. How would I mount, not SMGs, plasma. How would I mount plasma on this? I need to first get a few more. Uh, so let's go one, two, three. There's no point really having more than uh, six plasma because the rate of fire actually. I bought the wrong tier as well. What a moron. Um, plasma. One, two, three. There we go. I probably wrote, bought just the wrong weapon, period. Did that actually buy them? Yeah, okay. Now, for plasma on this, I'm not going to worry about putting any on the top. I'm literally just going to run with four. It brings me into tier three. Um, wait a minute, was I already in tier three? Am I being weird here? Okay. Uh, so we can't w run with the T3 plasmas on that. What else can I get? I think that's the lowest tier plasma you can actually get. Okay. Yeah, so tier 3 plasma. Hmm. So I can only put... three on there. So what I'd probably end up doing then is uh, changing the mounts around a little. Having something like this for the plasma and then I would put a strip of blocks across the front here so that we don't have to do too many modifications to make this work. Um, let's get these Pull that off there, put that. And the actual mount probably needs to be a tier 2 block anyway. And this way we now have three plasma on there instead. And let's run with that version. See how that works for us. Obviously we're going to have no capability of shooting upwards, but plasma are really inaccurate against air anyway. So that's why I don't have anything on the top. You don't need it. You're basically really not going to hit anything unless you're one of these super nut sniper dudes. Uh, so let's see just how well we do with this. Uh, I've lost all my guns now. That sucks. So, not doing so well as Plasma, especially against all of those SMGs. Uh, let's see if we can run. Run, 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 run. Get low down, low down. There we go. Keep close to the ground and then keep adjusting height to make it harder for them to actually hit. We shouldn't be taking off like that. That sucks. So a lot more sluggish because I've, I've managed to actually lose the rear health on my bot, which isn't what's supposed to happen. Anyway, let's get on the cap. Maybe we can win this 
just by capping. But I got one kill. I got no weapons, so I can't really do anything else. Get off the cap, you just uh, get him reset all the time. Well, he can't do any damage now, so we're good on that front. Anyway, that was building a tier 2 hover SMG. The design should be pretty solid, uh, even sticking with the tier 2 blades um, up until much higher tiers. Uh, let's just see what we can actually fit on there instead of in terms of higher tier items. So we've got tier 3 blades there. They won't fit on there, so you'd be stuck with the tier 2 blades. Um, but you've got a lot of redundancy there, just upgrading the armor and stuff like that. You can still go quite a way with this design. Um, I would say you could comfortably get up to about tier 4 before you really need to start considering redesigning or building out bigger. But to be honest, all you'd want to do is scale this entire outer ring out a little bit and put in tier 3 hover blades instead, um, or tier 4s, or whatever you got access to at the time. And yeah, it's the same kind of construction that you'd need to focus on. Um, anyway, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.